All right. Let me um, see if we um, if I'm online just yet. Hi guys, can you? Um... All right, good. Oh, audio is good. Just give me a sec. Let me just quickly share it. Awesome. Um, so good evening for my mates to my mates in Australia, and uh, good afternoon and good morning to everybody else, uh, all of you around the world, and welcome to the Godox uh, Lighting. Um, today, <laughs> I'm going to talk about this little, uh, little yet very powerful lights, 8100 Pro. Um, I will keep this short, relevantly short, so that everybody can, you know, um, can enjoy the talk as well as, you know, spend time with everything else. Um, feel free to leave your comments below. I will answer all the questions after my talk. I'll spend probably 15 to 20 minutes on the talk with my latest a photo shoot with 8100 Pro. After a while, after that, I'll spend the time to answer all of your questions. So if you leave your comments, leave your question in the comments, and um, I will try to answer them all. And the good news is we are going to give away 8100 Pro today. So you know, at the end of my presentation, I'll leave you guys a question, and that, and then if you answer the question within 24 uh, within 24 hours, we will give away. Of 180-100 Pro, so stay tuned. Cool. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi Tom. Miss you. Miss you, mate. All right. Let's get started, shall we? Um, so remember, you know, remember. I, I think two years ago I was uh, doing this presentation at WPPI in Las Vegas. Um, you, you, I, it, it's kind of I, I love my 8200 so much. It's almost like you're in relationship. You feel like you find the right one. You're never going to love any anybody else again. Well, I changed my mind. So this is my my new favorite, like at least for the run gun kind of photo shoots. That's my favorite. I'll tell you why. Um, number one, it's the size of 24 millimeters between Sony 24 GM and uh, 85 GM. So it's so small. It fits in my uh, camera bag uh, perfectly. And uh, I know 8200 Pro is quite small, but comparing with this one, this is much more discreet. And I'll, um, I tend to shoot in lots of busy uh, city locations, and this actually helps me a lot. It helps me a lot. All right, cool. So let's jump into the presentation, shall we? So I recently I did uh, I did a photo shoot. I did a, a fashion editorial uh, photo shoots in uh, right in the central metro of Sydney, uh, which is quite cool. And uh, we have a beautiful and gorgeous uh, model Raquel. Um, who's uh, a great on sites and uh, to be our model. And uh, I was going for the kind of, uh, you know, New York style, busy street, working with a couple of, uh, you know, ice latte sort of photo shoots. And um, yeah, and here we go. So on the left, you can see that image with natural light. And on the right, uh, sorry, on the right, you can see the natural light image. On the left, you can see the, um, the actual image after the flash is being used. I thought this will be intuitive way for you guys to see the difference. So basically what happened is the cloud coverage was in the afternoon. It's about uh, 60 to uh, 50 to 60 percent of cloud coverage. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's not overcast day. You guys can still see the kind of bluish lights in the background. The problem is there's not many natural lights, right? Uh, because it's actually in a city, metro city area. Most of the natural lights is being blocked by the buildings and uh, she is kind of under the shades. Now, um, all you can see on the right, her face is a bit dark, especially the shadow area under her, under her neck and on the right side of her face because it's close to the uh, building. Actually, there's no lights being bounced off or blocked. So what happened is I use uh, 80, um, 8100 Pro, 8100 Pro with uh, with a uh, UB105, which is a parabolic umbrella recently published by Godox. <clears throat> Sorry, if you can excuse me. Um, so here's it. Okay. Uh, the trick I actually happened with uh, how I use it is under, um, within the umbrella, I actually use the dome. So the dome actually helps um, the lights to further diffuse 
to 180 degrees, which evenly diffused within the umbrella and uh, makes the light even softer. And when you look at the image, you would imagine it's almost like a natural light, right? It's almost like a natural light, so even and so soft. And, you know, give a touch on her skin, um, bring out the details of the shadow area as well as, you know, lit up, um, lit up the orange outfit of hers and make it pop right out. And um, yeah, see, nice and easy. One light, one umbrella, that's it. Uh, the reason I use 8100 Pro is because um, if you guys are senior citizens, you know, it's, uh, it's, UT it's a building of UTS, which is right in the George Street, which is it's almost like Fifth Avenue in in United States, so it's one of the most it's one of the busiest streets in Sydney. I try to stay as low key as discreet as possible, so that way um, I I I do not distract everybody else. So too easy, one light, and I and the shot was shoot on a twenty four uh, millimeters lens. If you guys just in case if you guys are interested. Now let's move on to the next one, shall we? And here's another uh, scenario on the on the right. Again, you can see there is a kiss of sun bouncing off the building across the street on the top of the building, right? Which is gorgeous and beautiful. But the problem is for from where the model is standing, and she's she's actually quite dark. It's simply because the way uh, the light is bouncing, it's not bouncing on her face. That's the problem with natural light, right? We we see beautiful natural lights, but sometimes unless the model is is I don't know three meters high, as taller, a bit taller than Shaq O'Neal, um, there wouldn't be a beautiful you know piece of bouncing lights on her face. Now, that's uh, that's totally fine because I do have my off camera flash. Again, I use uh, eighty. I use 8100 Pro with uh, the 105 umbrella, but notice here, I instead of lit her uh, from side like a piece of window lights, which is the image I did before, I actually lit her from below. Uh, the reason is that uh, if you look at her chin area, on her chin area, and especially on her legs, it's it's getting quite dark. I want I actually rather than use umbrella as a key lights, I want to use umbrella as a few lights to lift up all the shadow details. And you, if you zoom in quite closely, you can all you can also see there is a beautiful catch light right in her eyes. So. Um, with umbrella, it's quite because it's a huge, a huge, you know, soft light source. It's actually quite forgivable where you place the light. You don't have to place the light 45 degrees, you know, right above her eyes. Uh, yalla yalla yalla. You can actually try. Life is life is fun to try. Try all the all the positions um, to place your light. See which one works for you. So I, I actually did a couple of trial. I find this one actually works. Uh, works the best for me and um yeah and here it is and it, it almost feel like the sun is bouncing off the street right the ground and the bounce over her face and give her this skin a nice beautiful glow here you go so you can use uh, the 8100 pro with umbrella as a piece of window just imagine them as a piece of window or you can imagine use the umbrella as a piece of fuel light it's almost like um you use a silver or white uh, reflector but uh, it's uh, way more powerful you get to control the output because uh, under shade sometimes the silver and white reflector wouldn't be powerful enough to lift all the shadows but with a flash of course you have the uh, freedom to control to control the power output and the tips here would be don't overdo this don't overpower the sun because if your main light source if your key light is coming from below then the image looks a bit awkward i'm not saying uh it's it's bad because sometimes it would work but in my for my taste in this particular scenario i would just use that as a few lights um uh, to subtly to subtly use it that works the best for me so guys, um, again, I will answer all your questions at the end of the presentation uh, so that um, all together during the Q&A sessions, feel free to leave you all your comments below. I will, uh, I will get to those within about five to 10 minutes. Here's another scenario. Here's another scenario. Uh, from the right, you can see where the natural light is. It's, uh, 
it's a it's a passage, right? It's the problem is it's quite dark. As I've told you, because it's in the city, all the sunlight is kind of get blocked away. But when I look at the architecture, when I look at the patterns of the wall, I would imagine you know how beautiful, uh, how beautiful the um, uh, the image would be if we have some beautiful sun kissing like in golden hours, uh, you know, shooting through the building, the patterns and falling on her. Unfortunately, with uh, with a uh, with a natural light, it's not going to happen simply because if the sunset is going that way, you never get to see the sunset at, at the horizon line within city. Right, because all the building would block it. So, what what happened here is I just create my own piece of golden hour lights with 180 100 Pro. Rather than soft light, this time I just use harsh light. Okay, so this is 80 100 Pro, and I what I did. Wait, just so this is 80 100 Pro. What I did is here's a grid attached to it. So it actually restricts the spread of the lights to focus, right? This will mimic, it's almost mimic the way how sunset, a, po a pocket of lights would be. And simple as that. Uh, and of course, I add a half CTO gel, um, which you would be able to find in the AKR1 kit, in the AKR1 kit. It's quite handy. So harsh light. Um, like soft light is most beautiful and pleasant light, but harsh light does work from time to time. In this scenario, it works beautifully. So Godox 8100 Pro with the AKR1. Cool. In order for you guys to see the details, I actually prepped some, um, some close-up. Here's um, here is the difference, guys. On the left, uh, both is successfully flashed. On the left, you will see uh, more. You'll see more uh, obvious flash. It's it's an image with much. Uh, it's a bit more drama. On the right, you will see a more natural light kind of feel. Right. Uh, if we want to put in another way, it's on the left. It's almost like you see a sunset on a full sunny day clear day with no cloud. On the right, you, you, you kind of feel the sun shooting through the cloud and falling on the model. So it's almost like 40% of cloud coverage, in a sense. Um, it's quite easy to do. I did not change my flash output. I simply did from move from left to right. Is On the left, um, I actually, actually under 1.5 stop underexposed the ambient. Right, because the underexposed ambient, you, uh, the ambient is less apparent. The flash becomes more obvious, so you see more a bit of the flash. Right, so you you see more, sh you have more shadows comparing with the highlights created by the flash. So if you're the kind of dramatic, you in you you loved the impact and drama kind of guy, go for the um, go for the left. Um, it's just underexposed ambient, and that's it. So easy to do. On the right, um, you just um, use the ambient. You just do not underexpose. Try to make, a, if you're doing the AV uh, sort of mode, try to uh, equivalent zero EV um, or even overexpose the ambient a bit so that you have a, a light and not, not light and airy per se, but you, you kind of have more apparent ambient light. And flash, it's almost like a kiss of key lights, right highlighting her face and part and part of the um, part of the the dress uh, out of the uh, out of the image. So each one speak to certain uh, customers or certain uh, people. Go for the one you you enjoy the most. And if you if you're leaving towards a particular one, leave in the comments and let me let me know. Cool. Another case, you can go for high key or go for low key. Okay. On the left, it's something I started with. There's uh, there is a so we went to another corner of the building. There's a, a porch of light coming through the cloud, kissing on her on her hair. If you can see that on the on the right uh, of uh, of the of the model. Uh, the problem is uh, again her face is a bit 
uh, it's a bit dark because it's overcast day. So I use, um, I use um, this time I use the Godox 100 Pro with the umbrella. So the umbrella, uh, the key here is not to overdone this, to use them as a fill light, right? So you can see all the shadow details of the, um, of the, uh, the clothes is actually being lifted. It's quite nice and even. It's beautiful, light orange. And it actually gives her kiss on her, on her skin. So you can see her nose, her T-bone areas, it's kind of popping out. So it has a beautiful uh, portrait light uh, out of her. And you don't even feel uh, the, how obvious the artificial light is because simply because uh, the way I'm going for, it's a natural look. Right, it's a natural look. It looks natural, but the light makes everything perfect. Of course, you you can go for something else at exactly the same location. We say, you know, why don't we just try something else? And on the right is rather than place. Listen to this. Rather than place the umbrella at the, at the same direction as a natural light to give a natural feel, I, I place the umbrella within. The wall. So the light is actually coming through the wall, right? As a key light to kiss on her skin. So what do you see on the right hand side? Her skin, her face, her nose, and her her cheek cheekbone area popping out, and her cheek, her chin is under shade. It's all created by the flash with the umbrella. Because the umbrella is a such a light, large light source. It's a such an ideal, uh, ideal uh, beauty light. Right. If you want to go for the soft, uh, soft, um, soft, cloudy day sort of moody look, which is perfect for this case because we want the orange to pop out uh, from the from the mo moody street uh, sort of background. And the natural light actually here is if you look at the hair on the um, on the right, that actually uh, the highlight of her hair. On the right, it's actually the natural light. So from left to right, you well, all you have to do is to to stop underexposed the ambient and replace replace um, where your uh, eighty one hundred Pro it should be. It's such a versatile light, right? It can be used as a um, of course as a feel a feel light because it's so light with umbrella you can almost easily lift it up anywhere. And it's powerful enough. I'm not saying you, you want to come back some with this light, but it's powerful enough to underexpose the ambient to deliver a dramatic image look. Okay? So, okay. another uh, look by 8100 Pro. So, this is a little alley right behind um, you know, the wall we shoot at. Um, it's simply no natural light at all. It's almost like no natural light because um, by the time we get there, it's getting quite dark. And it's uh, actually uh, a very tiny alley in between two high tall buildings. So there's no natural light at all. So you can, you see with a 180 and 100 Pro with uh, umbrella, you can have a beautiful, it's almost like a studio look, uh, studio look uh, umbrella shot, very simple. And this time it's a very simple uh, 45 degrees um, out of, uh, besides the camera, uh, very traditional kind of light. The trick here is, uh, number one, why I choose the location is because I feel the orange uh, flower actually matches uh, the orange of the model. By using the flash will make her stand out from the background. The trick here is to give some distance between the model and the wall, right? So the lights hit on the model and the lights would not uh, overlead the wall, which becomes a distraction, right? So light so with a distance between model and the wall, we almost have a very subtle light fall off on the wall. The shadow wouldn't be so apparent. And you know we have a beautiful luminosity-wise separation uh, from the model and the wall. So you can use um, 8100 Pro as a straight vibe sort of photo shoot. Of course, you can use 8100 Pro um, to um, to do some sort of studio look image as well. That's um, that's no problem at all. All right. So uh, to summarize, um, 
Edwin Android Pro is a, a beautiful, it's such a, it's such a versatile light, right? I can use a, a bigger, a bigger uh, soft light source with it, like umbrella will be perfect, right? I, I personally use 105 with it, but you can use 130 or 85, it doesn't matter. Um, the tips would be, um, add this on a dome, right? It would further diffuse your light to evenly distribute it in the, uh, in the umbrella. Now, you can, of course, uh, use this as a large, uh, a small light source. Use a grate to limit the light spread. Use a color gel to mimic the sun. Uh, it will be beautifully mimic the sunset, right? Which I have just shown you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. Now, uh, let me drop the question. Uh, let me drop the, um, the um, uh, give you guys a good news. I promised we have a 18100 Pro giveaway and here it is. I will give away this 8100 Pro and then we will I will attend all your questions, all your questions, okay? So we have one eighty one guys, pay attention to this. We have 8100 Pro giveaway today, right? Simply comments below uh, in our Facebook and YouTube, this very, very video, and uh, we will select the winner within 24 hours. The question is, what would you create with 8100 Pro? Are you going to shoot some food? Are you going to shoot a portrait? And comments below, let us know, right? And the team would select the winner within 24 hours. So please, please make sure if you comments, comments within 24 hours. Just simply say, what would you create with any 100 Pro? Simple. And if you want to, uh, if you want to follow up my work, um, that's uh, my Instagram handle, Aries Tao Tao. Um, that's uh, my Instagram handle and uh, my website, which is coming soon, will be aristotle.com.au. And I hope you guys enjoyed this talk. Let me answer all the questions because before I call off the day. All right. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching. How do you mount this with a softbox? It's not a bow and mount. Hi, Kabir. Uh, if you want a bow and mount, easy. You can use uh, S2 type brackets. S2 type brackets to mount on any bower mounts uh, softbox. And with the umbrella I use, um, it actually, I just use the native mount. Wait, um, I just use the native mount, come with this 8100 Pro. It actually comes with the box, right? I can attach the 8100 Pro on the native mount. And it actually comes with, a, if you can see that, it comes with an umbrella hole. Can you see it? It, come, it comes with an umbrella hole, yep. So that would help me to uh, to mount it. I don't need any sort of extra mount. It It's already come with um, the 8100 Pro. Um, Nahas mentioned, how would you avoid uh, the reflection? Well, um, I would say that do not, there's not much reflection that I notice. It looks like a silver building, but it doesn't really reflect the lights. So it's all good. It's not glass. It's just a silver look, a metal building. Um, the reflection wasn't any problem when I uh, when I noticed. Uh, Kabir say, how do we use light modifier on this? Um, Godox has actually published uh, light modifier. As I said, uh, there are two types of light modifiers in general, right? If you want a small light modifier, go for the Godox AKR1, right? It's so far the most versatile. It's a very economic solution uh, for light, uh, small light modifiers, such as you can use a grate. Um, it comes with a dome and uh, it comes with a color gel, bomb door, snoot, pretty much everything you need as a har harsh light source. Uh, with a soft light source, uh, you can always combine. Um, it actually comes with this um, umbrella. Uh, it al already comes with this umbrella mount, which allows you to mount on any uh, light stand with an umbrella hole. Right, so Kabir, you can mount 8100 Pro easily 
with a umbrella, like I the image I showed you today. If you want to mount it on any softbox with a bowen mount, you can purchase an S2 type bracket separately. Okay. Uh, Mark Gavia is asking me, can you use S2 type brackets or anything generic brands wants to? Yes, you can use S2 type brackets. Hi, Dong. How are you, Mike? Um, How do 8100 Pro compare with speed lights? Um, so basically, uh, with speed lights, um, I find, the ref um, well, typical speed lights is 60 watts. 8100 Pro is 100 watts. So you have a bit more power. It's so easy with a native uh, round head sort of adapter. And more importantly, I I find it's um, it's about everything. The high speed sync is be best uh, performance is be better than uh, than speed lights. As well as uh, the ref, um, the more importantly to me, the uh, recycling time it's actually quite short. This helped me to speed up um, my to speed up my my shoot. Especially, I'm shooting multiple locations with a talent team. Every everybody's time is precious, so I try to be as more efe as efficient as possible. And if you are the one try to shoot fast, or you know you think of recycling time is a factor to you, then 8100 Pro it's definitely a winner comparing with speed lights. Okay, and it's smaller too. And it's smaller too. Yes. So Dan, my has a question says, uh, Godox V1, I have been using Godox V1 and thinking working more dramatic outdoor, uh, decided me to 8200 Pro and 8100 Pro, which are you recommending? I personally would recommend 8100 Pro because simply because um, the round head, it's so easy to use and it's native and so easy to and compact in my, in my bag. And um, yes, with 8200 Pro, you have more light, but it's bigger. I'd rather carry two 8100 Pro with me um, because most of the time I wouldn't, um, I I feel like, like it's enough and it's smaller in my bag. And if you truly want to create something dramatic um, and overpower the sound or ish, down, I would go for 8300 Pro or plus, all right? So 8100 Pro or 8300 Pro is probably a better idea for your dramatic portrait comparing with 8200 Pro. Um, you either go for the size or you go for the power. Cool, thank you guys. I hope that I answer everybody's question and um, without, um, with a load, load of useful information to you. And I hope you enjoy the talk. And um, hopefully um, I will see you guys next week. Bye for now. See ya, bye.